We cannot but thank the Lord. We cannot but give praises and glory to His name, to His Son, Jesus Christ, and to the blessed Holy Spirit for all that He's doing. He's expanding on us every day. His mercies never come to an end. His loving kindness never ceases. That's why we have seen another day. Another day for nourishment. Another day to be nourished by His word, by His will, by His purpose for our lives, so that we too can nourish others. That's always the goal of God for our lives, that we are nourished enough as leaders, as ministers, as workers in the vineyard of the Lord, so that we can nourish others for Him. Our topic today is factors of progress. If you really want to progress in the work of the Lord in your Christian life, in a, an any endeavor that God places in your hand, these are the factors that will help you to progress. And the scripture today is taken from the book of Job, chapter 17, verse number 9, that says, The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. Man, that's a very powerful scripture. The righteous shall hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands, he that has allowed the blood of Jesus to wash his hands clean, he that has clean hands, he that have clean hands, not dirty hands, not blood-soaked hands, he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. In other words, if you are going to have progress, you become stronger and stronger and stronger. There are some factors you must submit it to. Very important. Progress is the advancement that is measurable. Progress is the advancement that is measurable. You can measure it. You can measure where you were yesterday or last year or last month or a few years back. You can measure where you are. You can measure where you have gotten to now. What is the progress you have made between last year and this year? And from this year to the next and to the next couple of months and years, you can measure the progress that you are believing God to achieve in your life. Progress is the advancement that is measurable. Progress can be swift. It can be slow. However, the idea is that you must never so stop or get stuck in a rut. Either you are moving very fast, or you are moving slowly, or you are moving consistently, the idea is that you don't stop, or you don't get stopped in a rut. Progress can be swift. What it takes some people 10 years to achieve, you can achieve it in 5, 7, 10 uh, years, and some people can achieve it in 15, 20 years. The idea is don't stop. Progress can be swift, progress can be slow. But the idea is you don't stop. Progress is a non-negotiable will of God for our lives. Like I told the Israelites beside the Red Sea, what are you waiting for? March forward. Go forward. That is always the message of God for his people. And when you read Deuteronomy chapter 2 from verse 1 there, he told the Israelites, you have come past this mountain. You have parambulate. You have gone round the north. This is the time to go forward, to go north. Move on. God is not happy that we are staying in a spot or we are jumping up at a particular spot. Either in our life or in ministry or in church, He wants us to move forward. He wants us to progress. He wants us to move from glory to glory, strength to strength, and power to power. Remember our scripture today. He that has clean sons shall be stronger and stronger. God wants us to be stronger and stronger in Him, not weaker and weaker. It is when we have let God, when God is no more working with us, when we are walking outside the will of God, that we become weaker and weaker. But when we are in the will of God, when we have built progress, when we follow these factors of progress, then we shall be stronger and stronger in the things of the Lord, either financially or spiritually or ministerially or in our family or every day of our life, shall be stronger and stronger to progress, to truly progress. Consider these factors that I want to mention for you. There are five factors I want to mention today, but they are very fundamental and crucial also, which you must build into your life if you really want to progress. Number one factor for progress, your choice. Your choice, the choice you make. You know, man, we are, we are free moral agents, so you are free to make a choice. There are people who choose not to grow. There are people who choose not to progress. There are people who choose to be stagnant. There are children, people who say, I like where I am. I, I don't want to progress. I want to remain. They may not put it directly like that, but that's what the attitude says. That's the message they communicate. So your choice is very important. If you don't make a choice, we, you will give room to chance. And when you give room to chance, then you, give, you, you may not have chance to truly grow. 
So it's important you make a choice. I want to grow. I want to progress. Either you are nearly taking to that territory, either you are nearly taking to that church, either you nearly start that ministry, or they nearly transfer you there, or they brought you there. Somebody have messed up the whole place. The whole place, the whole church is down. The church is stagnant. The church is not growing. It has lost members. The building is dilapidated. People are in disarray. You must choose to progress. You must choose growth. It is then growth will come. Because if you don't make a choice, you give room to chance. And chance will chance you. And you have no chance to progress in life and ministry. Number two, your climate. Choose your climate. Choose your climate. Your environment determines your progress. Where you are situated. Where are you situated? Is your environment helpful or hurting your growth? There are some climate that will never help our growth. There are some atmosphere that will never help our growth that we need to change. If you are in the atmosphere of strife, of uh, fighting, quarreling, animosity, lack of love, suspicion, envy, and jealousy, you will never progress. You need to change that climate. You need to get out of that climate. It's not every climate that will make the grass to grow. And it's not every atmosphere that, that, that will bring miracle signs and wonders. There are atmo atmosphere that will stifle your growth and stifle God. They will even stifle God from walking. So you really want to progress. Choose your atmosphere. Choose your climate. Get out of nasty, stively environment. Where the air is very stively, it's very thick. There's a lot of crisis, a conflict there that you can't progress. You can't take any step of progress. You need to change it. You need to get out of that climate. If it is the atmosphere of fighting and quarreling and all those things, I can bet you the Spirit of God cannot work. You need to have a way of resolving that climate. Then you can grow. So number one is your choice. Number two is your climate. Number three is your change. It's your change. If you stop changing, you are true with progress. You want to progress, then get ready to change. Small, small changes. Small, small changes that will lead to drastic changes later. You must be willing to change. If you won't change, you will not see progress. If you are rigid, you are stagnant, then nothing will happen. Because change is constant in life. Even though men have resisted changes, well, we must change. We must change. And if you change, if you are willing to change, then you can progress. Number four, your connection. Your connection. If you are connected to him, you are truly connected. Allow the current of progress to flow from him to you and flow into your life by being truly connected to him. He said you can see progress. That's factor number four. Number five, your commitment. To progress, you must be committed. Until you are truly committed to progress, you will not really see it in your work. You must show serious commitment before you can witness marked improvement in your life and in your ministry. Progress is the advancement that is measurable. Now the question is, how progressive are you? Are you? Since you became the leader, since people you have that responsibility, since you became a minister, since you are a church worker, what progress have you brought? What progress have you seen? Or oh, you didn't bring progress, you bring retrogression. Because it's either you are progressing or you are retrogressing. So as a church worker, are you contributing to the progress of the church? Or you are retrogressing the church by your words, by your actions, by your behavior and conduct, by your prayers, by your disobedient living, by your double life? No, you must bring progress. Progress is non-negotiable. God wants us to progress, but you must have these five factors in place. Your choice, your change, your climate, your connection, and your commitment. Once that is in place, I can assure you, your progress will be open for all to see. Everywhere you go, you'll see the progress that you have never seen before. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.